Let's talk about why Webflow is sh**. Bombastic headlines aside, I don't think Webflow is inherently sh**. I think there are things that it's good at and there are things that it's bad at. There's really only one type of website that Webflow is good for, but we'll get into that. Who am I to talk about whether Webflow is shit or whether it's good? My name's Samuel Gregory. I've been producing Webflow content on YouTube for the last four years, but I've been a front-end developer for nearly 20 years, building websites, apps, games for the likes of Netflix, Corning, huge startups from the front end to the back end to the design to the UX. And of course, I have my own company, Jupiter in the Draft, where I lead teams in building some of the best web apps games I've ever seen. And in the last year or so, I've been focusing more on the no code landscape in general, applying my years of experience in order to really look at a tool objectively and determine what it's good for and what it's bad for. So this is where we get to Webflow. So the first one is web apps. Now, whilst I fully aware that WIST is around and it's a fantastic tool and it's a very clever utilization, I do think there's a reason why Webflow don't necessarily talk about using Webflow as a web app thing. The main problem with this is that you don't have any access to the back end of the code. This means that you're doing everything with JavaScript. You're loading the page, you're running JavaScript, making all your third party API calls, bringing them back in, loading them in the page, repainting the browser. There's a lot that goes into it, right? And this affects performance, this affects SEO, and this affects accessibility, right? We'll get into that in a little bit. And you might say that if you're in a web app and you've logged in, the SEO really isn't the utmost importance. And you're partly right. The issue is a lot of people will follow tutorials, they'll follow how to do something, but they won't understand really that the impact that it's actually having. Yes, it can be done, doesn't mean you should. And from a security standpoint of view, you can spoof browsers, right? You can pretend that you're coming from an IP address, coming from a certain user. You can rewrite data in the JavaScript request. There's so much you can do on the front end to manipulate and bypass security and ultimately start to hack anything because it's coming from the front end. If I remember rightly, there was something that went down with Firebase, which is a popular authentication system in something like WISD. And without very careful setup, it becomes very easy to compromise. The way you should do it is you build a back end that has all of the keys, all of the security features, and it can only accept certain requests and certain data structures. And then it interrogates that before then forwarding that request onto a third party service, whether that's an authentication system or a database or something like that. So in a nutshell, that is web apps. Probably gonna get a lot of stick for this because they offer an enterprise plan, but enterprise websites. Enterprise businesses have a lot of integrations that need to be done and you are limited solely by the apps, JavaScript libraries and integrations that have already been built for Webflow. Anything more, you can only do that from the front end, which again goes back to the web app thing of having things load after the page, which is affecting SEO which kind of leads into the next one. And that is when you have complex data structures that basically intertwine with each other. There's currently a limitation on the number of nested collections you can have within your CMS. So let's say, for example, you've got a blog post and it, you can tag the blog post with the type of whatever it is. You can have different categories. You can have up to, I think, five or 10 at the moment, but you can't show those nested collections inside of a blog post or but numbers aside, when a company comes to me and they're starting to talk about needing lots of interlocking databases and things like that, I start to really second guess whether Webflow is the right tool for that sort of thing, because you can't manipulate data um, easily without the use of things like FinSuite attributes, which are once again, from a technical standpoint, are fantastic libraries, but you're doing this after the page load, which means you're affecting SEO. Kind of a theme there, isn't there? Again, probably you can get a lot of stick for this, but European websites. Now, GDPR in and of itself is just a complete mess. I've got a video where I basically just say, do whatever. <laughs> Don't know whether that was the greatest of advice in the world, but ultimately, because Webflow's stance on GDPR remains particularly unclear, having to download third-party libraries to, to, to manage all your GDPR, even though GDPR goes a lot further than that, Webflow just haven't made it abundantly clear that their system is completely GDPR compliant. So if GDPR is a huge issue, maybe you're using an enterprise website that's dealing with health or government, 
then you probably want to second guess using Webflow. I recently used DivHunt, which allow you to store and run the website and all its databases on a European server. That's the sort of level of compliance that I really want to see when it comes to Webflow, but it's just not there. It's super unclear where all the form data is stored, and if indeed Webflow are collecting their own data and storing it under their own analytical system. Similarly, accessible websites. Now, once again, basic websites are totally fine. My biggest deal was, <laughs> which ties into one of my most popular videos, is the interactions panel and its effect on accessibility. If you're dealing with a website that needs to uphold very high web accessibility standards, yes, you can do it on Webflow, but if you start to use interactions, this is where you're gonna run into a lot of problems because the interactions panel doesn't allow you to notify an accessible user about what's happened, or any such things like that. You can write JavaScript to, or use a, a library like GSAP, which enables you to toggle various states and things like that, which will make it accessible. But ultimately it comes down to the designer and whether they know that you have to do this, which will make a break whether a website is accessible or not. But I won't write any more about that because there's a whole 20 minute video going into why it's so bad for accessibility. Saying all this when it comes to accessibility and SEO, one topic I was going to get into is the choice of elements or components that you have access to. Now, I think Webflow only give you about 30 different elements, whereas there are about 120 HTML elements that you have access to, which determine the semantics of the content in a website. Webflow give you the custom element, which allows you to have any element that you want. But once again, it ultimately comes down to the designer and whether they know about HTML elements, what they mean and what they do. So whilst I say that you can't build fully SEO compliant and accessible websites in Webflow because you can technically use the custom element, it's then up to your designer to use it correctly. So with all that being said, what is Webflow good for? Well, in my opinion, it's great for really slick looking marketing websites where design is at the forefront of the experience. I think Webflow as a tool have really identified exactly what these sorts of websites require and giving you the tools that you need to be able to build these versions. Saying that, the theme of this channel really comes down to discovering the tools that's right for your client. And I think it really suits growing companies, companies that need to iterate fast, that are discovering new tools, new processes, and figuring out their service proposition. And Webflow and its flexibility can facilitate that along the way. But as with all website tools, even down to WordPress, you do get to a point where you need to sort of take stock, look at what your website is doing for you and whether it still earns your purpose. So I'd recommend doing that every three to five years is, to be honest but yeah companies that are growing webflow is perfect for so i think that'll do it those are the sort of top of mind downsides that webflow have you might agree you might disagree but overall webflow is a fantastic tool i think you just need to know what it's good for and what it's bad for to make a decision whether it's right for you your client or the project so if you like this you want to hear more from me talking about all things no code then like subscribe if you haven't already and until next time happy no coding